Hey, in today's video, I wanted to do a review of the book, Good Strategy, Bad Strategy by Richard Rommelt, or Rommelt, not sure how to pronounce it. Richard Rommelt was working back in the 60s in the GPL laboratory, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and he joined Harvard Business School as an associate professor in the 70s. He has a plenty of experience with business and corporate strategy, and he has his own consultant firm where he has been helping different companies to adopt as good strategies as possible. And he is also very famous for all the studies that he has done around strategy in general and business and corporations. So in this video, I want to go through my key takeouts when reading this book and what are the things that I have liked about it and what are the things that maybe I think that could have been a little bit different. So just from the get-go, I want to say that I really enjoyed the book. I think that his thoughts are really good. He is a very clear and um, very definitely elaborate or, or very well articulated person and very inter intelligent when it comes to describe the reality of what a strategy is. And he is also quite blunt about the situation of company strategies. Hence the title, Good Strategy, Bad Strategy. So first of all, I think that what it's important to say is that he identifies that many companies, probably most of the companies out there have a bad strategy or might not even have a strategy at all. What happens is that many companies confuse what a strategy is with their goals and their vision, and they can be their financial goals as well. And they think that, hey, if I want to be serving this kind of market, I don't know, building electric vehicles, and by the year 2030, I'm producing 5 million vehicles, that's a great strategy. But that is not a strategy. That it's kind of a vision plus a goal, but it doesn't tell me how I'm going to get there. It's, it's maybe a very good idea to get there, to try to do that, but it doesn't tell you, it doesn't help you to get there. So the confusion comes that they don't understand that the strategy is the way to get to your vision. So for me, the problem here is that many companies, they really don't understand what strategy is. And even if they understand it, maybe it's too hard work to actually get a strategy done and done properly. Good strategy, I think that one of the things that I really like on the book is that he defines or where he talks about good strategy, he says that a good strategy is something that is simple and simple to understand. The problem is that getting to that simple strategy is probably a hard and complex problem to solve because you have to understand many things to actually get to that strategy, but we'll get there in a moment. And I think that here he talks about an example from President Woodrow Wilson. He, apparently that's the quote that comes from him and there might be some disputes if this is his quote or not. Not gonna get there because not an expert on quotes. So the story goes that a member of the cabinet was congratulating Wilson uh, for some short speeches and asked him about the type time that it took him to prepare these speeches. And the quote goes as, it depends. If I am to speak 10 minutes, I need a week for preparation. If 15 minutes, three days. If half an hour, two days. If an hour, I'm ready now. And I think that this is very important because the more you have to talk or the more you can do like a brain dump, is easier to do. If you want to condense your message and have a very simply simple to understand and straightforward and to the point, you really have to condense this massive amount of information and try to reduce it to this one minute pitch, for example. It is very difficult to get from that one to this one. And that's why, for example, getting a great marketing message is not easy. And I think that this is a the beauty of a good strategy is, sounds really simple, it's probably a lot of work to get there. I think the next key takeout for me is when he talks about what a good strategy is, is like the way to take over those potential obstacles that you have to reach your goals. And when you want to reach a goal, there are going to be certain areas that you know that are going to be harder to actually tackle. Like for example, taking back the uh, example of the electric vehicles, I think that one of the most brilliant strategies of Tesla was to get the supercharger network implemented. 
they could have done and gone for the vehicles, but then there would be yet another player, okay, with a nicer vehicle, probably, especially in the very beginning when they came up with a Model S, but where people could not go very far from their home. So anything that it was like a, a road trip probably could not happen because it was very unreliable where you could find places to charge your vehicle. The fact that they took this into account and they saw this as an obstacle for people to use their vehicles or their electric cars. That's, I think, one of the most successful strategies that there are there, especially when you think about Tesla and also electric vehicles, obviously. And one of the very important things of a good strategy is that you are putting your mind in solving the problem, solving that obstacle and getting closer to your goals. That's what I said strategy. That's why strategies are important when you're building a product because you want the people focus this on one or two strategies, three, four, maybe tops, depends on the teams that you have, and that they focus the energies on overcoming that obstacle that it's preventing you from reaching your goals. This is why it's very important to be focused, to be able to prioritize against your strategies because then you understand that, hey, I'm, I am actually tackling this problem and we are going to overcome it and get closer to our vision. So when talking about a good strategy, what he says is that there are some core or like kernel, as he calls it, aspects that you are going to have to concentrate in, in order to get to that good strategy. First of all, what he talks is about a diagnosis and diagnosis is to understand the challenge that the company has. The challenge that companies has can be many different ones. If you are building a new product to try to understand what are going to be those key successful areas that are going to help you succeed. If a company is coming to your playground or with a product and they are taking over, what are the key success factors that you probably have to take into account to reposition your products to be able to stay relevant and not being taken over by the competition? There are many, basically you have to understand what problem you have, what situation you have, and see how you can move forward in the future. Then he talks about having a guiding policy. This guiding policy is going to help everybody dealing with the problems that they have identified during the diagnosis uh, process. And here, what they want to do is that you want to elaborate these areas or or area, depends on how many strategies you are built or how many strategic areas or in the strategic intents do you have, but you want to define them and you want to un for people to understand that this is the problem that we had to solve. And this is the focus area that we need to tackle. So you don't want that people are kind of going all around the place and trying to solve too many problems without really solving any of them. So always try to concentrate in solving Ideally, one problem at a time, solve it, move to the next one. That is going to help you a lot moving when you're trying to kind of spread to thing, well, just spread to thing, then you don't solve many problems usually. And finally, he talks about a set of coherent actions that are going to actually tell you how you're going to solve this problem. This means that you are going to resource teams to actually tackle this problem, that you are going to have the necessary budgets, that you are going to make sure that there are a list of actions like the execution plan to actually tackle this strategic goal. Then the other part that I really like is that he also talks about the three opposite uh, things that actually will bring about a strategy. So the first one that he talks about is fluff. Uh, this means that, well, you're basically trying to talk yourself out of uh, having a bad strategy. You are using a ton of potentially very cool and fancy words to actually explain what you're trying to achieve um, using many terms like, I don't know, AI or blockchain or distributed uh, technologies or, I don't know, value propositions or many of those terms that we are using when we sometimes try to pretend that we know something and maybe we don't know that topic that well. That's fluff. The next one is failure to face the challenge or even understanding that you have a problem. This is a little bit of sometimes uh, maybe a denial phase for, for some companies or, or not even maybe understanding that there is some potentially technology product out there 
that might be taking over where they have been in their comfortable turf. This is a very common problem for established companies that they kind of sit down, they're comfortable with the way of working, it just works. Why change the ways of working if we are getting the revenue, if we are still successful? But sometimes you will start to see that, that there are problems, like mobile phones are going to start to come like back in the mid 2000s or any other technology that you see that is coming and that is getting more popular. AI nowadays, even if there might be a little bit of fluff even in that one at this point, but it's clearly something that is coming. And if you don't start to take these new technologies or these new trends into account, it's going to possibly kick you out of the game and you're not going to be probably able to compete with your competitors. The final one of a bad strategy is make mistake your goals with the strategies. Uh, there are many people that they will just go with things that uh, our strategic goal this year is that we are going to grow 20, 30, 40%. So, well, that's not a strategic uh, plan. That's just a goal. It doesn't tell me how am I going to bridge that obstacle. That's in a way, a little bit of wishful thinking, unless there is a realistic plan on how I'm going to get to that 20, 30, 50%, whatever it is. There is also this other approach that it's kind of similar where people, they think that we will do it because we will do it, because we can do it, because we have the team, we have the people that are very committed. But people being committed doesn't mean that they are going to know how to tackle the issue, know how to tackle the problem. So what are my thoughts and maybe more like my review side of, of the book? I think that one of the things that he talks about is that a strategy, well, I'm going to start with the different with the positive. I think that the different book is great. I would recommend it for anybody to, to go and check it out. And I'll put the link to the book in, in the description down below. Uh, I think it is a really interesting book. It's definitely, He's definitely somebody that knows really well what he's talking about. He has worked with a ton of companies and, and clearly shows. He understands strategy really well and he understands very well where potentially companies are missing. He might not know the correct strategy, but that's kind of obvious. He doesn't know or need to know every single company, but he knows like the signs of companies missing that good strategy. One of the things that I really like about the view book is that he has uh, or talks a lot about the examples of people that he has worked with, uh, different companies, uh, different uh, sometimes governments. And he has cases like even from the military, so not necessarily people that he has worked with, but historical uh, cases. And I think that those are super interesting that you can see that sometimes, uh, I think that he talks even about a military case and some kind of battle and a uh, that people were asking about why some general was so successful. I think it was somebody during the uh, first Iraq war. And uh, it was funny that actually what he was describing or what was like everybody was taking as a very surprising strategy that some people even were going against it. It was actually a playbook strategy from the military. And, and that tells you also that even if we have a playbook of what to do, it's easy to find that uh, pushback against good strategy as well. One of the things maybe uh, that is, I wouldn't say that I disagree, I definitely agree how he says it, but he talks and he's emphasized a lot th that you have to have an execution plan for your strategy. And uh, I have to admit that when I define a strategy, I don't necessarily always define the execution plan. And I use the strategy also for people to help them prioritize when new opportunities come. Uh, although I agree that when you think that, hey, this is a strategic goal for us, and, and if we want to tackle, I don't know, like for example, uh, with Tesla, uh, if they want to build that network for the superchargers, definitely, that, it, that has to come with a plan. But if new opportunities, it's like software de development, we work with tons of opportunities coming all the time. So for me, where a strategy is really good is to understand that, hey, if we are focusing on 
I don't know, improving the quality of designs, that is a strategic area. We might have a set of actions to actually improve that area. But if some new opportunities come, unless they are in that certain area, we're not going to tackle them because otherwise it's going to take away from the focus that we want to have. So I agree completely that strategy definitely has to drive action. I don't necessarily always have all the potential actions that are going to follow up that strategy, given that uh, how software development and how agile software development is, it's uh, quite much of a moving target in many ways. But having that strategy is what it doesn't make you just go like this in circles and never reaching your goal is the one that can, you know, guide you in a certain direction. Maybe one of the things, and, and I appreciate though, that he's also talking about old, uh, some old examples, because I don't know, of course, he has worked with many companies since he started uh, doing uh, consulting for, for different companies and helping them with their strategy. Uh, some of the examples are from back in the day, so maybe even in the 80s or 90s. And so it's a little bit funny to hear from some companies that have successful strategies back in those years, in the 80s or 90s, but nowadays are actually struggling with competition or with their actual strategies or potentially lack of a strategy. And that's something that it tells you also about the life cycle of companies and products. Uh, companies don't stay up all the time. They go through cycles and typically they might, not everybody gets to be successful, obviously, but those that get to be successful, they might have some years that they are successful. And after that, they start to fade away because they are not able to, by some of those uh, mistakes or those uh, aspects that he mentioned as failing to define a good strategy, like, I don't know, failing to identify the potential challenge that is coming towards in your industry, then you probably are going to be out of business. And this is something that, hey, well, that happens to many companies. And we have seen it with many, many popular products in the past, which sadly have faded away because they were not able to cope with the, with the years. And that's something that typically happens with the companies when they mature. And not all the companies, it's difficult to stay relevant and to stay popular or to stay as a, as a relevant product for many years. And this is something that is not a problem, but it kind of sounds a little bit funny when you hear those ones. So good strategy, bad strategy. Have you read it? Let us know in the comments below. And did you like it? I have been putting recently a set of resources and PDFs and information that I wanted to share with you to help you with your journey when creating products and trying to create successful products. I will link them below and in the description and in the pinned comments so you can go and check them out. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next one. And remember, stay safe.